imprisoned in the wooden building day after day, my freedom withheld. How can I bear to talk about it? I looked to see who was happy, but they only said quietly, I am anxious and depressed and cannot fall asleep. The days are long, and the bottle constantly empty. The history of naturalization in the U.S. goes all the way back to 1790 of the first Naturalization Act. It allowed free white people living within the U.S. for at least two years to apply for citizenship. Over the years, there have been dozens of acts and policies that have changed how naturalization works. Some seek to expand, while others seek to limit. The 14th Amendment marks a key milestone in the history of naturalization. Granting citizenship as a birthright, it allowed immigrant children to become official naturalized United States citizens. A darker spot in naturalization slash immigration would be the Chinese Exclusion Act which prohibited all Chinese immigration for around 60 years. And then came the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965, which established a new philosophy towards immigration, favoring reuniting immigrant families and attracting skilled laborers. These philosophies regarding immigration and naturalization are the ones that are still in place today. To apply to become a naturalized citizen of the United States, one must be 18 years of age, be a legal permanent resident, and have been a legal permanent resident for five years. To obtain this legal permanent resident status, one must acquire a green card, which can be acquired through a plethora of different ways. The most notable ones which has been here since the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 are family and employment. There are also other methods and paths to becoming a permanent resident, such as being a special immigrant, refugee, victim of abuse, or crime victim. There is also the diversity visa program, which can usher in people from countries which see low immigration rates to the United States. The application process itself has its fair share of grievances. The toughest part was really the long lines and of going there, waiting, trying to find out the the uh, status of your application. There was nothing online that I could have checked and uh, to see where I was like, in the process. So that was the frustrating part. The lack of communication and transparency in the application process can leave some to be desired. Nevertheless, the final acquisition of the American citizenship is a momentous occasion that many become ecstatic about. The naturalization of illegal immigrants is a very contentious topic. In 1986, the Immigration Reform and Control Act allowed immigrants who entered the United States illegally before 1982 to apply for legal status. The act granted around 3 million illegal immigrants legal status in the United States. In 2012, President Obama introduced a policy known as DACA, which gave a pathway for undocumented citizens to apply for employment. If you came over before the age of 16, and you are currently under the age of 31, and you've been here since 2007, you can apply for DACA, which allows you to apply for work authorization to allow you to work here legally. But this program is not a direct pathway to citizenship. I think the biggest flaw in the DACA program is that it is not a law, and because it's only done by executive action, it can be taken away quite easily. Before these people, who have lived here since they were a child, grew up here, learned the same thing as every other American citizen, why should they be neglected the even playing field? Why shouldn't they be able to vote, qualify as jury, and why should they risk chance of deportation in face of a crime? Time and time again, we've seen the positives that these immigrants can contribute to our society. So for these people who came here, grew up, had families, settled down, hold stable jobs, what makes them different from any other citizen?